So we're ready to get started. And I'm going to start off with a search this morning and we're gonna talk about customizing your results and your screen and do lots of wonderful things. So here we are. I'm gonna hover over the search tab and I'm gonna to go to residential quick. The first thing I would like you to notice is the left-hand side of the screen where all the default statuses are. And I know many of you don't have any interest in searching active option kick out and so forth. So I'm gonna unselect those. Now to save this as my default screen, way over here in the top right hand corner under the results tab you will notice a funny little icon it's called a gear and when I hover over that and click on it it says to set the currently selected search criteria as my starting default so I'm going to click on that and from now on every time I do a residential quick search I have just the active status that's a great tip and it's going to save you some time now let's talk about the subdivision this morning. Many of you search by subdivision, and sometimes what you do, you forget to put in our little searching um, icon or searching symbol. So if I type in Royal, if I type in Royal Chapel, and I don't have to capitalize, and you'll notice down here at the bottom, there's no matches. Why don't we get any matches, Barb? Well, we forgot to put the famous asterisk right back on chapel, right at the end of chapel, and you will notice I now have one match. But let's say, Gail, that you don't know if it's Royal Chapel, Chapel Royal, who knows what it's called, but you know it has the word chapel in it. So what I'm going to do is put an asterisk in front of chapel. Oh. Uh, isn't that, now we found 32. Now, I don't know if they're single family or not, so I'm gonna select single family. We still have 32, <laughs> but that's the entire MLS. Let's go to city and type in Dallas and see how many I find. Ah, did you notice, Gail, that it dropped down to seven? So there's only seven properties in a subdivision that contains the word chapel. And I'm gonna go ahead and do results and let's take a look at these. Okay, let's. This is the standard one-liner and it's okay. You know, I can see the pictures and I can see the map and I can see the history. And there's the tax icon. Well, let's look at the history for just a second. This is what the history tab will show you. And I can see this property went on the market on uh, June of 2015. And that's some nice information. I can see it's had some price reductions and when it sold the last time. I'm gonna go ahead and close it. And just to show you and remind you, that's where you can get all your pictures. You can scroll through all the pictures. Now I'm gonna click on the MLS number and you're going to get the full agent report. This is everything you need to know about the property. A lot of great information, how long it's been on the market, your property description. And let me say something about the public driving directions. This agent did a good job. Mm -hmm. I want you to know that if you put in there, use GPS or see Masco, you might get a little email from us that asks you not to do that. We don't like that. No, because there are a lot of agents, Gail, that still don't use GPS, and some people don't know what a MAPSCO is if they've come from another place. <laughs> so, now let's go back to the agent single line. Now, this is okay, but I need some more information on there. Gail, what do you think we should add on this one-liner? Ooh, I don't see days on market. You know what? I don't either, but I'm going to show you a cool shortcut if you really want to see days on market and not change your one-liner. Okay. Look right up here where it says display. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna click on that drop down. Ah, it says hot sheet. Now watch what happens. Look over here in the far right hand side. Wow, there's my days on market. But you will also notice I can see if they've had a price reduction. A green arrow pointing up means it's an increase and the red arrow means it's a decrease. I like that. I do too. Now I, you know, I don't do math very well and I you know I don't know what a reduction of 5.26 percent would be mm -hmm. so when I hover over that it tells me it went from 379.9 oh. to 359.9 I like that I do too and what I like even more is I want to sort by days on market mm -hmm. so I'm going to take my mouse get that famous little pointy finger click my mouse and now I've sorted from days on market down all the way up high to 110 days 
great little tidbit here for you this morning. If you want to change your display, you just click the little down arrow and you change to what you want. And again, that was the hot sheet. Thank you. I'm going to go, you're quite welcome. <laughs> I'm going to go back to the agent single line now. We're going to customize this. First of all, I want to add a field. I think I'd like to add like city. I could ask, I could add cumulative days. So how do you do that? I'm going to hover my mouse over any column header. It could be address, it could be status. It doesn't make any difference where you hover your mouse. What is important is you get those four arrows. I left click my mouse and I click insert column. On the left, on the bottom of the screen, you will notice all the fields that you can insert. I'm gonna make a shortcut. I'm gonna type in D-O-M and look what happens. Two choices. Now, unfortunately, you can't pick them both at the same time. So I'm gonna do C-D-O-M, click on it. I click apply and there it is. Oh, wow. Comprehensive days on market. Now, you know, I'd also like to add the city and the listing agent. So I hover again over a column header, get my four arrows, click insert column, and this time I'm gonna type in the word list. And every field that has list in it is going to appear. And I want the listing agent's full name, okay. and I click apply. Now, one other thing I like, I'm gonna scroll over here on the far right-hand side. That is the current price. Well, it's way over on the right. I wanna move it over by the address. Here's how you can move your columns. Hover your mouse over the column header name, mm -hmm. get four arrows, left click, hold that mouse button down and drag and let go. Okay. So it's click, hold, drag and let go. There is the current price. I would like the original list price. Mm -hmm. So guess what? I'm gonna add that column, go down to insert column and I'm gonna type in price, P-R-I-C-E, there I am. There's the original list price. I click on it, I click apply. Now I can see the original list price and compare it to the current price. And I see we have a couple reductions here. So that's a really good feature. Now, as I look over here and I see square foot total, mm -hmm. Gail, I know it's the total. I don't need to see that word. Mm -hmm. I want to customize the column name. Okay. I hover over the column name. Mm -hmm. I left click my mouse. Mm -hmm. And right there, if you can see the word total, I'm going to get rid of it. Okay. Right. Then I'm going to click auto fit. Okay. Notice the number changed. It's mm -hmm. going to narrow the column. And then I click apply. Isn't that much better? That is great. Thank you, Barb. You're welcome. Oh, but look at my original list price. It's right justified. We don't read from right to left, but left to right. So I need to change the justification, mm -hmm. get my four arrows. That's the key, folks. You've got to have those four arrows. And I'm going to align it to the left and click apply. Nice. So we have all of these wonderful columns in the order that we want them. Now the next thing we want to do is sort them. Okay. To sort my results. Mm -hmm. I go down to refine at the very bottom left hand corner of the screen and I click on sort. Okay. Now you'll notice this is how my results is sorting at this time. I don't want it to sort by days on market. I would like it to sort by MLS area so I click on that first and I'm gonna move it up. There's the up button. Uh, I don't really need it to sort by days on market so I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna remove it. So I want mine sorting by MLS number and then the name of the street. That's what I would like. And then of course, I click OK in the lower left hand corner of the screen. And now it's sorting by MLS area and then by address. And I can see very quickly we have two on carryback. Nice. They're both active and one's 389, one's 379. So I really like that. Up here at the top of the screen where it says display, make sure it always says 100. That way you don't have to flip through pages and pages of listings if you get like, you know, 75 or 80. If you had 25 there, you'd have to go through too many pages. So I change it to 100. Mm -hmm. Now I want to save this as my default. So you'll notice right here, there's that famous gear again. We're going to click on it. I'm going to set my current display, sort order, and count per page as my starting search default. When I click on that, from now on, every time I log in, 
and do a search, it's going to come up with this format. That's pretty cool, don't you think? I think so. Thanks, Barb. You're welcome. All right. So let's go back to criteria for just a moment. Okay. You know, on this quick search screen, there there's a lot of fields that aren't available to you. Mm -hmm. I love the quick search screen. It's very handy if you're doing an iPad because that's just what shows up on the iPad. You don't have to be min, uh, scrolling back and forth and pinching Maximum. the screen and yeah. so forth. Yeah, okay. it makes it really nice. I want to add a couple of fields. Okay. We get a lot of phone calls about a mother-in-law suite, a gated community, things of that nature. So okay. what I have to do is go down to the very bottom of the screen where it says additional fields and I click add. Okay, we'll see it. And down here where it says search, I'm gonna type in exterior and I want exterior features. I click on that, I click add. Now I also want some other fields, not just exterior features, but I wanna search a particular kind of room. So I'm gonna do a room search Okay. and I click add. Perfect, okay. All right, now I've got exterior features, room search, and one more is common features. And I'm gonna show you what common features will do. It's Good. pretty slick. I wanna see it. I'm gonna click back. Now I'm gonna scroll down. First of all, let's talk about the exterior features. Mm -hmm. As I scroll down, you've got covered porches, and if you've got that someone that has a lot of horses, this is the S Exquarians. I can't even say it, Gail. It's early <laughs> in the morning. Ex yeah, it's that thing. The I haven't center. had enough coffee, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and there's your gazebo. Ah, there is your guest quarters. Ah. We get so many calls for that. There's your guest quarters. And one more, mm. one more. There's your separate entry quarters. Oh. So if you have that special person in your life and you would like them to have their own little space like the mother-in-law, <laughs> there's your separate entry quarters. Now let's talk about rooms. Mm -hmm. If I click the down arrow, you want a second master. And there it is right there, second master. You want a music room. There's your guest suite. Mm -hmm. There's your study den. So this is how you search for those other type of rooms. And Second Master seems to be a real popular one now. If you select something and you know it's a mistake, just hold your control key down and click on your entry and it goes away. Now the common features. We have the elevator, if you need an elevator. Your community pool. Now let's talk about a pool just a moment. A community pool would be in a condominium complex. Okay. That would be a community pool. If you have a single family home and there's a pool in the backyard, there's a field when you add your listing, it's called pool. All right, so there's your gated entry and there's your guarded entrance. So we have many of those choices and you simply go to additional fields, add a remove. What happens if I wanna remove one? I go to add and remove, I go over here and select the one I don't want any longer. I click remove and I go back. Okay. These fields will stay there until you change it. So remember that they're always gonna be there. You can't move them around. Now I wanna start another search and I wanna start it clear. I wanna erase everything. Right down here in the bottom left-hand corner is what I call a whisk broom. It kind of dates me a little bit. I'm gonna click clear and I can start all over again. And I'm gonna do an active search and a sold search. Ooh. You'll notice my solds go to zero to 90. Mm -hmm. If I wanna change that, I certainly can. I can do to 180. I can put in a date range like January 1st of 2016 with a plus sign following it. It's whatever is easiest for you. Okay, hold on just a second, we have a question. Oh great, I love now, questions. Wendy wants to know, if when you have a sold um, and you change it to zero to 180, what if you really like it like that? Can you leave it like that? You sure can, Wendy, right up here, right up here. See that gear? You click that and that's set as your currently, your default setting. So every time now I do a residential quick search, it's automatically gonna be zero to 180. Okay, thanks for the question, Wendy. And if I don't want to search that, I can just unclick the solds and I'm ready to go for just actives. Okay. Good question. So I'm going to do 0, 180 and I just want single family. 
Now, I can put in an area. Now, there's some of you out there, I'm sure, have no idea what the area is. <laughs> Many years ago, um, the MLS formed sections of town by an area. I'm going to click this icon right here, and you'll notice, let me move that up a little bit, uh, far north Dallas is 11, we got southeast Dallas, Cedar Hill, DeSoto, they all have a particular area number. You do not have to search by an area number. You can search by city, you can search by zip code, you can search just by county. I'm going to search Dallas, and I have way too many matches obviously, so I need to break this down just a little bit. So I'm going to do 250 to 350 and see how I've got here, see what I've got here. I'm down to 796. I really think I need to narrow it down. I want four or more bedrooms, and I want four or more bathrooms. Wow. And I'm looking for a square, f oh, I got eight. I think that's good enough. <laughs> I think that is. I'm going to do results. Now, here's what many of you are doing. You want a quick CMA. So you select them. You go to quick CMA. It comes up. Then you save this, you go up here in the top right hand corner, you click save, you save it on your desktop, then you open your email, then you attach the quick CMA, and you email it. I'm here to tell you, you don't need to do that. There's a much easier way to do it. Oh, thank goodness. I'm going to close that. Here's the quick CMA, or I'm going to do the quick CMA. I'm not going to click quick CMA. I'm going to click, are you ready for this? Print. So you click print to you, email a quick CMA? I know it doesn't make a lick of sense, <laughs> but you're going to do it anyway. Okay. Check this out. The CMA one line is the quick CMA. Oh. How about that? Now, I have more good news for you. Okay. I can hold my control key down, and I can also send to my buyers or sellers the multi-map and the customer flyer. Please notice I have three selected and it still says email. I can hold my control key down and I can do the three up comparison. Wow, that's pretty cool. So you can choose more than one by holding out your control key. That's great. Absolutely, absolutely. Now I would click email PDF great. and lo and behold, it would email all those listings in all those formats. Now let's go up here if I wanted to email the customer full. Okay. You have an opportunity to preview it if you're not sure what that is. I'm going to do the multi-map and I'm going to click preview for you so you can see what a cool print or email this is. There's the map. I'm okay. going to scroll down. Check this out. Oh, so it's just a little summary. Just a little, little summary. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. and people know exactly where the house is. I love this, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Now there is the portal full, that's mm -hmm. kind of boring, but let's look at the customer flyer. Okay. That's very, very nice. Nice pic. that's a nice picture, Ooh. I like that. A mm -hmm. little bit about the property, mm -hmm. description, schools, mm -hmm. and there's my next one. Mm -hmm. All right, now remember over here when you're printing, Mm -hmm. If you have a check mark in this box, it's going to print your name, your footer, your header and your footer. Okay. If you select this one, it will print the criteria that you've searched for at the bottom of your results. Like four bedroom, four bath. Exactly. Oh, okay. Exactly. Okay. Now, if you check this box, you're not going to print any pictures. Ah. So, if you want to print pictures, you uncheck it. <laughs> okay. Uncheck it if you want the pictures. Now. If you want to go ahead and print your criteria and so forth, that's fine. But I choose not to because it wastes paper. So this is how you can print more than one, how you can email more than one, and again, this is how you email the quick CMA. No more saving Ugh. and attaching to an email. Ugh. So do we like that? We I love think we, that. Li we like are. that. So I'm going to go back to the results. And here is our standard one-liner. And notice there's the original list price. Oh, wait, I forgot something. Okay. Oh, my gosh. I want the price per square foot. Okay. So let's add another column, and then I'm going to show you how to save it. So I'm going to type in the word price, and I'm going to scroll down, and you'll notice ratio comes up. You have the close price. <laughs> you have the current price by acres. You have the 
current price by square foot. That's the one I want. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to click apply. And here it is. Oh, lordy mighty. Look at this. Way too big the right, name. Right, right. Okay. I'm going to change it real quick like. I'm going to change it real quick like. Come on. There mm -hmm. we go. And I can get rid of the word ratio. I can do current price by square foot. Or what I like to do is just put a little dollar sign. And that indicates to me that I know what it is. And auto fit it. Apply. Oops, I sent it to the right side. Let's left justify it. And then I can adjust the edge of the column just like this. Now, since I've made adjustments, I need to resave this. I'm going to go up here to the little pencil and paper. And I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'm going to resave it as my original. I, got, I get so excited, I forget where I am. So I'm going to click the gear and set it as my current default. All right, so we're good with that, aren't we? We like that. We've got our custom search results, and I think it's time for another poll. Okay. We kind of like to know who's out there this morning. If you're a broker, you're an agent, you're an assistant, your staff. You know, we at Metrotex really have a great professional development department. We have many, many classes for whoever you might be, a broker, an affiliate, um, um, a, um, an assistant. And the way that you can find some classes is you go to mymetrotext.com and you'll notice right down here at the bottom you'll notice down here at the bottom oh okay so we'll show you that in just one yeah. second as soon as we're done with our poll okay the poll is okay. still going on here that's all right so again we have a lot of classes take advantage of all of our classes at metrotext many of them are free many of them are at a very reduced cost for you so that you can keep up with your education all right, how are we doing here, Gail? We got any questions this morning? Well, tell you what, let's take a look at our poll and see what um, we got. Yes, so we have, oh Ooh. wow, 22% um, of you are brokers. Oh, great. 67% are agents. All right. And then 11% are assistants to agents. Well, I like to see that because the agents go to the assistants. You have an important job keeping those agents in line. <laughs> now, let me show you where the classes are mymetrotext.com, here they are right here, here it is, right here, view all classes. When you click that link, I want to show you a shortcut. Over on the left hand side, many of you like our assistants today. They don't need any designations or continuing education. They don't attend a committee meeting or they don't want to see association events. So I can unselect what I'm not interested in this just leaves all the MLS classes. How cool is that? I like it. I do too. Now, if you're an agent and you want to work on a designation, select designations, and there you can see our ePro and our GRI and so forth. Great tip this morning. So sign up for those classes. We have a lot of them um, this month, matter of fact. Well, February, you can see. January is almost gone. I know. When did that happen? I don't know. All so right. Uh, yes. We do have a question. Oh, good. Barbara wants to know. Um, bye. Good morning, Barbara. Yeah. Um, how do you delete a field? Um, for example, we want to delete uh, price per square foot. Very good. It's very easy. I'm going to hover over that column header, mm -hmm. get that famous four arrows again, and I'm going to remove the column. Okay. You've got to remember the key to adding and removing a column is the four arrow. When you get the pointy finger, that's how you can sort the column. So when you get a pointy finger, it will sort the column. When you get four arrows, that's where you can add a column, remove a column, make adjustments to the alignment. So, okay. Okay? Perfect. So that four arrows is the key. Okay. Hopefully we got you squared away. Thanks, Barbara. All right. So here's our search results. I want to save this search. I don't want to save it for anybody in particular. I just want to save the search. So at the bottom of the screen, you have the word save. I click on it. Three ways you can save a search. New save search is the first one I'm going to talk about. I'm going to click on new save search and I'm going to give this search a name. For example, if this was, uh, this search was Dallas, um, and a price range, I think I had 250 to 350. 
give it a name that makes sense to you that will help you remember that search. You will notice it says enable as a favorite search on a home tab. When I click on that, I will show you in just a moment where that search can be found and I will also talk about the contact in just a moment. This is just a plain save search, nothing fancy, I'm just saving it. Bottom of the screen, I click save. All right, that's one way to save. The second way to save is the new auto email. Now Gail and I and WJ and Heather, our four instructors here at Metrotex, we teach a class, Client Management, and we talk about the auto email. I'm going to click on New Auto Email. If you already have a client saved in the system, I click the down arrow and there are my clients. If I want to create a new client or contact, I would click here and add their name and phone number and so forth, right here. Okay. But I already have a contact, so I'm going to click the down arrow, and I'm going to do Ann Burrell. I'm always going to blind carbon copy me. That's important, so you know what's being sent out. Okay. I have a subject. It's going to be Homes in Dallas for Ann. I like to put the name of the client in my subject line. This is the Welcome to the Portal email. When you come to class, you'll learn how to change that. And Recurring Email, you can change that as well to make it more your style. Okay. So I'm going to move on down here and settings. A concierge mode is where you receive the email or the listings first. You can look at them, you can appro approve, for the, approve them and send them on their way, or you can say, nah, that's not going to be great mm -hmm. for my buyer and not send it. I'm going to unselect that. You want to show this contact and reverse prospect. If Gail has a listing and I have the buyer, there is a function that Gail can do that will show her my name and my prospect number and it tells Gail that there is a prospect in the system that is interested in a listing very similar, similar to hers. It's a great function and I encourage you always to click show this contact and reverse prospecting. So basically, the listing agent can see that you as the buyer's agent sent it out, yep. but not specifically to which customer. Oh, no, no, no. You will okay. never ever see who my, my customer or my buyer is. That's, okay. sh that's secret. You can't know that. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> now, I can enable this as a favorite search on my home tab, which I will do, so you can see that in a moment. How do I want this automatic email to go out? In today's market, I strongly suggest ASAP hmm. because as soon as anything matches what my prospect wants, it's going out there. Okay. Now, daily, you certainly could do daily, and you'll notice you can do all AM, all PM. In the AM, it's like 6 o'clock in the morning, PM, eh, 5, 6 o'clock at night, somewhere around there. You don't have to do that. Um, 10, 10, 30. All right. Okay. Monthly. I can send it out monthly if I wanted to. And then I can save it, whatever I wanted to do. I'll do ASAP and click Save. All right, the last search is saving it to the speed bar. Now you need to notice there is a forward slash there and I'm just gonna call it um, um, Dallas. I can't think of a name right at the moment, I'll just call it Dallas. And I can have a description that's optional if I wanted to and I'm gonna save it. So I've showed you three ways to save your search. Now let me show you where they are on the home page. I'm going to click the home page. See where it says my favorite searches? You should have that on your home page somewhere. Scroll up, scroll down, it should be there somewhere. You will notice this is Homes in Dallas for Ann and there's Dallas for 250350. When I click on Dallas 250350, watch what happens. Here they come. You can have 10 properties on the home page. You can have 10 searches, I should say. However, all your searches are found under my matrix, save searches. And they're all my save searches. All your auto emails are under my matrix, auto emails, and there they are. When you come to class, you'll learn what the red circle means in a little bit. Now, what about this speed bar? We have a question. Oh yes, so Karen wants to know, 
Um, we were talking about the reverse prospecting, that sure. box where if I have a listing and you send it out, yeah. okay, where do you go to see that information? Oh, oh good question, Karen. So I'm going to come home and I'm going to find my listings. There's my, oh dear, if I had an active listing, right up here I would select active listings mm -hmm. and I don't have any active listings let's see if we can do it with pending listings and then if I select it see where it's um, it'll say reverse prospecting here I don't have an active listing at the moment but if you can barely see it'll say reverse prospecting and it will show you it will show you the um, other agents name Right. So basically, if you have an active listing, mm -hmm. you could go into your listings mm -hmm. and then um, put a check mark next to the mm -hmm. listing you'd like and do reverse prospecting. You know, this is a great segue in how to change the status of my listing. Hey, I, let's I, do I, think, that. I'll I think I'll show that. Okay. I'm going to go to input. Okay. And I'm going to select right here. And there's my um, there's my pending listing. And let me change it to active so you can see how that works and it expires I think I'll change that date to 2018 how about that and I'll submit it so now I have an active listing okay. now let me refresh my screen make sure everything's good now let's try and see how that works All let me right. go to my listings there hmm it's not there yet let's see go to my matrix and my let me see my office active listing. Let me see if I can do that. And um, well, there's hit counters. Hmm. There's the reverse prospect right there. Let me click on that. And if anyone had yeah. sent this out, we yeah. would see that on the list. But since it's a test listing, yeah. we kind of don't encourage people to send test listings no. out to their <laughs> no. customers. No. Yeah. So. Notice the hit counters over here too. If this listing had gone out to some client portals meaning if Gail had a prospect and she sent it out and and it got to her clients portal we'd see a count here how many times it's been viewed all of this we go over in great detail in the client management and prospecting class so I'd encourage you to come to that class Karen that you'll really enjoy it's a lot of good information or give us a call in MLS at any time when you have questions and also we are put, posting a video about that very topic thanks Karen in um, the next <laughs> couple of days so look out for that as well all right another quick questions that we always get is how do I search by an address what y'all are doing is you're going here to search you're going to residential you're putting in an address here and you're not finding anything no nope. you go to your home screen your home screen and you put the address right here for example I'm going to do 3030 McKinney M-C-K-I-N-N-E-Y and I'm going to click search this is the best way to search by an address it will pull up all statuses all um, property types you'll notice this is all leased there's an expired there's canceled let's see if we've got an active anywhere Oh, there we are there's an active one so again if you're going to search by an address from your home screen it's always best to do it right here now I can just type in a street name if I wanted to and or I could have typed in a unit number since 3030 McKinney is a bunch of condos and so forth so that's a good tip for you this morning the next tip on address let's go back to search screen okay you have someone that's called and Gail says she wants to list her property and I say great Gail and we do all the conversation I hang up the phone we set up an appointment now I want to know what's active and sold around her house okay so look right up here where it says within quarter of a mile of I am going to put in her address so let me put in let's say um, what would be good at let's do 3212 Grantwood G-R-A-N-T-W-O-O-D space Dallas comma T-X now please notice right up here it says no map selected watch what happens when I click my mouse somewhere else on the screen it tells me by that red indication map area selected that it read the address and down here at the very bottom there are 18 matches oh I want to see those on the map okay and I'll wait patiently <laughs> and there they are oh, there okay. they are okay 
and I can make the map larger by grabbing the circle and I can in decrease it by grabbing the circle as well. Okay. And if I want to see the results, I certainly can by clicking results at the top of the screen. Now, speaking of map, let's talk about driving directions. Okay. Uh, this is relatively new. So I'm going to go to search, resident. Now I could go to detail too. Detail has more information on the screen as you can see. You have a lot more fields on a detailed search. I oh, I've got to unselect those. I just want active. And I'm just going to do single family as well. I'm going to narrow it down just a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to click map search. Nothing more, just map search. When the map appears, mm -hmm. depending on your zoomness level, if you're zoomed in real close, you'll see little green houses. If you're zoomed out far, you're going to see some circles with some numbers on them. I'll zoom out and see this. Don't let that bother you. Just zoom in to where you want to be. And I think I'll zoom in right around here. Now we have someone that wants to live in this area, but they want to know how far it would be to get to a particular address, a place of business, their okay. day, daycare, wherever it might be. Okay. Right up here is a little clock. Oh. Drive time. I'm mm -hmm. going to click on that. And I want to enter a location to for drive time. So I'm going to do 1901 Maine, okay. Dallas. So you're putting in the city and state. Good. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. TX. So I've got, and I'm going to add that address. And now I'm I'm going to. Ah. Uh, so you always have, have to, to click press in the, enter. Yeah, you have, have to, to press click enter. enter. And when you see the. Um, Mm. And when you see it try to standardize, when it gives you a zip code, mm -hmm. it recognizes that address. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you always have to hit enter, and I know I always forget I that. forget to. Yeah. Now there's Grand Prairie and Duncanville. I'm going to click this down arrow and see if I've ever, ah, see, there's 1901 Main Street. I did it a long time ago. Okay. And it's on my list, so I'm going to do that. Okay. I want to arrive at, mm, let's say i got to get an early start. Oh my gosh. I know, I'm an early riser. And I want to get there within 30 minutes. Okay. Now watch what happens when I click add. It's working. Ooh. Be patient. Here it comes. Okay. It's thinking. 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 Oh my thinking. goodness. Well, didn't that work well? Okay, scroll out a little bit. Let's see. Oh, oh there we go. Yeah. Woo! Looky there. Whoa. So you can pretty much live anywhere and <laughs> get there within 30 minutes. Well, let's, oh my goodness. Well. Let me see if I can, I'll change that just a little bit. Let's make it, um, let's make it nine o'clock and let's pick another, let's pick my, um, uh, where we go, there's uh, 1901, where's 1901 Main Street and, yeah. and let's see if it'll make a little bit difference. Oh yeah, rush hour makes a huge yes, difference. Yes. Now I can change this if I wanted to okay. by just grabbing the circle now now let's 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 do this I'm gonna click the whisk room and start all over again let's talk about the drive time these are just estimates folks we know that the weather the traffic we hear wrecks whatever it might be <laughs> so keep that in mind it's just an estimate but it's kind of a keen feature and so we're saying 830 we need to be there in 15 minutes let's yeah. take a look there okay. you go. See, that's okay. a little bit better. Yeah. So that's one cool thing you can do on the map. We get a lot of questions on where are the schools, give me the MLS areas, things around property on the map. Look up here in the top right-hand corner. You have this blue little icon. You can see your layers. Oh, okay. Here's, uh, I can see the school districts. Here are my areas. I'll click areas and zoom out a little bit. Give it time. I can do the rail stations if I want to. What you need to do, ladies and gentlemen, is click on this little blue thing and ask what you want to see. Just click what you want to see. Do I want to see school districts? Do I want to see the schools? Do What do you want to see? And I think I'll do the schools and show you what that looks like. Okay. It's going to zoom in. I'll zoom in and you're going to see Oh, those little pink triangles. The triangles are the schools, but if you zoom in real close, it gives you the name of the school. Ah, so okay. that's a very, 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 very cool thing. So 
I think we need to ask these fine people, Gail, what functions do they like best? Okay, let's ask. You Hold know, on. there's so yes, many functions that you can do, and we find that a lot of you are a little hesitant to click on something. We don't want you to be afraid. Just click on something and, and be adventurous and say, well, that looks interesting, and click on it, and we'll see what functions they like to do, uh, what they think is the best function. You know, we have tax, we have... Um, doing the map, we have statistics, we have um, the market reports. There's so much that you can do. Let's see. They like the CMAs. Ooh, they do. Wow, they love the CMAs, don't they? <laughs> wow, that's like 100%, y'all. Right. That's Everybody loves CMAs. And the map search, yeah. That they map, do like that? Okay. The auto emails is another favorite. That's right. really, really good. That's right. good. Okay. Now, let me, how much time have we got here, Gail? So you what, let me just, let's show the audience what they voted for. So yes, let's show them, but absolutely. Yeah. Take a look at that. Wow, everybody loves I CMAs, guess. Mark. <laughs> well, I know. And you know, when Gail and I teach classes as well as WJ and Heather, this is very helpful to us. We want to know what your favorite things are and what, what you like to do and what you want to learn how to do. So this is great. Thank you for that. Okay, back to your screen. All right, we're back here. So hopefully you've all gotten some tidbits on searching on the home screen, how you can des design your one-liner, how you can save your default screen, and so forth. We, we need to do a little bit in tax because we get a lot of questions about realist tax. So I'm going to jump up here where it says realist tax. I'm going to click on it. You can search multiple counties. You can design your own tax search screen. You can do mailing labels. You can find properties where the owner doesn't live there. There's so many cool things you can do in tax. And here's where it is right now. You will notice I have multiple counties selected. I can go to change region and I can pick whatever county I want. I have Dallas and Denton selected. If I didn't want Denton, I can click the X and apply. Here is the quick search. The quick search is easy peasy. You type in an address, 123 Maple Street. You do the search. Bingo, you've got it. But I want to talk about my search. This is where you can customize your input screen. Now, this, this is okay, but I want to change it. It's not what I want. So I go down to edit attributes on the bottom of the screen, and over here in the right, I can take away those fields I will never ever search for. I don't know zoning codes and I'm not going to search total units or estimated lot areas and I'll never search by a sold date or sale price or recording date in tax. But I will search by a house number and a street name and I'll also search by subdivision. So I'm going to select those. I can also search by the owner name. There's two ways, owner name and owner last name. I'll show you the difference. And if it's owner occupied, that's a biggie, owner occupied. So I have what I want. And all of those things you checked will become your search boxes, right? That's right, and oh, I'm gonna show okay. you how to save it. Oh, nice. So I'm gonna click apply. <laughs> and this is everything I wanna be able to search for. Okay. Now I wanna save it as mine, not the general search. I click the blue tab. That's the save, and I give it a name, uh, my search screen. Call it anything you want and click save. Now we're going to do uh, a search, and so let's see here. Notice it says house number is. I want a block range, so I click is. I click is between. I now have an opportunity to search by like 3200 to 3500 and a given street name, G-R-A-N-T-W or Grantwood. And when I click search, lo and behold, I have a block range. Now I have a split screen. I'm, I don't want to see the map particularly. So under the map on the lower right hand corner, I'm going to click grid. And there's my one liner. Guess what? I can change the one liner to what I want to see down here in the bottom right hand corner I click edit grid show hide columns and I pick what I want to see isn't that interesting uh, I want to see if it's owner occupied or not that's great I click apply and now I have over here if 
I scroll all the way over here, I have if it's owner occupied. I can search owner occupied. I can clear this screen and start all over again. I might want more than one street, so I will do G-R-A-N-T-W-O-O-D. And please notice I click the plus sign. And then I'll add another street. Uh, I'll do E-L-I-Z-A-B-E-T-H, Elizabeth. I click the plus sign. And I'm going to go down here, owner occupied. I'm going to say no and click search. And lo and behold, here come all those properties on those two streets where the owner occupied selection and that record says no. On any record that you select, let's say this is my subject property, I want you to notice that I can do comparables. I can do a little CMA in tax. How cool is that? Hey. That's, that's very cool. I can get statistics under market trends. I can see my neighbors. There is so much that you can do in the tax system. I want to show you quickly that you can create labels. You pick, do you want three across, 10 down, two across. You pick, you want the property address or the tax billing address, meaning where does the owner get their bill, and you click create, and bingo, you have made mailing labels. Now, if you want to export, you click export. Oh, now you have grid or customize. You can select customize, and you pick what fields from the tax record you want to export. Okay. That's a good feature. If I'm using someone to produce my mailing labels, you'll notice I want the owner name, tax billing address, and so forth. And I've also thrown that in there for an example, uh, mailing owner name and so forth. Okay. You save the export, mm -hmm. and you give it a name, my export. You give it a, a different name, of course, that makes sense to you. <laughs> okay. And then if I want to export it, I, cl I load it, and then I click Export, and it will open up uh, Microsoft Excel, and you're ready to roll with that one. So that's we like that a lot. That's a okay, good feature. Good, good. So how are we doing on questions this morning, Gail? I think you've been answering them as we go. Okay, um, good, good. Do, you ha do we have, uh, let's talk about... How much time are we got? I want, I want to show these fine people a little bit about RPR. Okay, let's talk about RPR. That is the National Association of Realtors new program, Realtor Property Resource. Okay, and let's see how many of you guys have used RPR. Yes, that would be a good idea, I think so. We have a poll question. See if any of you have used it, and that will help us to see if we need to, um, and just for your information, we will be having a new class approved pretty soon on the commercial side of RPR. I know a lot of you don't do commercial, but it, it would be interesting to some of you, I'm sure. So we're waiting for this quick poll. Let's see how many have used RPR. Oh, goodness gracious, we have a little education to do. Oh, my goodness, <laughs> everybody needs to use RPR. Uh, we've got 75% that said no. So. I'm going to show you a little bit about RPR. Okay. First of all, when you log into RPR, uh, the first screen, when you go to NARPR.com, you'll have to sign in. It's free. It's part of being a member of the Metro Texas Association of Realtors. Your email address and then a password. And you can just use what you have in MLS, of course. I want you to notice you have several choices here. You, have, you can search for all properties. You can search for for sale properties. You can do all kinds of searches. I'm just going to put in a particular address just to show you. I'm going to put in 3212 G-R-A-N-T-W-O-O-D. I could put in a value range, but I'm not going to because it's a particular address. Okay. I'm not putting in the city. I'm just going to click the little magnifying glass. Oh, live dangerously. Bob. I am living dangerously. <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, we only got one. Okay. But look at all the information. We have a map over here. I'm going to make the map bigger. Okay. And I this is my subject property. And these are estimated values here in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I can show a smaller map. Okay. I have basic facts, four bedrooms, three bathrooms, single family, square footage. Here is a picture of the house from, you know, the Google. And then we have median estimated home values in this neighborhood. 
12 month change in median value, lots of really, really good information. Now, does this house have to be listed in the MLS? Too? Oh, no, because this house is not listed in the uh -oh. MLS. This is just an address I picked out. Okay, so it doesn't necessarily have to have ever been listed no, in the MLS to show up. No, absolutely not. Oh. Absolutely not. Now, if I wanted to look at the history, mm -hmm. I click history and see what I get. Sales and financing activity. Okay. Prior sales transactions. Okay. Tax assessment. Mm -hmm. Mortgage records. <laughs> Good. And then we have charts. Okay. Some interesting charts if you're into charts and statistics and so forth. There you have this information. Okay. Refined value. If I was going to do a CMA, I could add information here, Gail. I could talk to this homeowner and they could tell me that they've made some improvements. What okay. kind of improvement? They have they have done a bedroom uh, bathroom remodel mid-range. Okay. And I can put in the date that it was completed. And then what was the total cost? And I can add some information. So they spent fifteen thousand on that? And yeah. And it will it will change the value. I can refine the market conditions. Is it average? No, it's hot right now. Home exterior, yeah, it's not so good. <laughs> the lot size I've driven by, it's larger than most. The view, let's just say it backs up to a wall. The view is not so good okay. and the privacy is not so good. So you can see down here, ah. it changes the value. Now I can restore the original if I feel like I've made some mistakes. I can create a report. Let me show you all the reports that you can create. I can't go into every report this morning, but we do have a RPR class. It's three hours for CE credit, and we go into much greater detail. So here is a property flyer, seller's report, market activity report. Let's look at the seller's report. Let's, let's show a sample. Okay. Let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger so you can see it a little more clearly. So it is approximately 75 pages. Now, I doubt seriously, Gail, if you'll want 75 pages. Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> but you can, you can pick what pages you want in your market report. Any oh, of these okay. reports, you can pick how many pages you want. You don't need 75, you don't need 52. You can select, and I will show you right here. Look at all this. Oh, so if you uncheck those things, those pages don't appear. They do not appear. Oh, that's absolutely great. not. Absolutely not. So I can get rid of all these, whatever I want to show okay. in my report. I'm going to go back home. Okay. Um, tell you what, can we pull that property up again just really quickly? Is that a sure. question? Sure. Okay. G R A. Oh, G R A N T. There I am over here on the left hand side. Okay. Now, um, Karen wanted to know, Yes. Uh, what's the difference between an RVM and an AVM? Oh, one of my favorite topics. <laughs> <laughs> okay, an AVM is an automated valuation model, and I want you to think of Zillow. Oh. Basic, I know, I said that word. Basically, <laughs> it is a guess. Uh, just as a refresher, we are a non-disclosed state. Mm-hmm. The sales price of any home in the state of Texas is not revealed to any public um, website of any type, and Zillow has no idea. So an AVM is a guess. Now an RVM is Realtor Valuation Model. Okay. Because we are, um, and uh, RPR is using data from MLS, their RVM is much more accurate because uh they can see sold data. It is a program within MLS and they can see the sold price and it is more accurate. Right, okay? but keep in mind, only agents have access oh, to this. Yes, yes. yes. Unless, oh, if you yes. are not a realtor, you do not have access to this, so we do keep the information yes. strictly within. Absolutely, yes. yeah. No one, uh, anybody that's not an agent can't, you can't log into it at all. You okay. have, yeah, so good question, thank you for that. As you can see, the RPR has a lot of good information. I can do so schools, neighborhood, market activity. I can do an advanced search. I can search by someone's name if I wanted to. Okay. Square footage. I can look for distressed properties as mm -hmm. well if I okay. needed to. A lot of really good information. So we encourage you to come to the RPR class. Again, we have many, many classes. 
So how are we doing on the questions? Do we have any more questions from you this morning? Well, we got to thank you. We appreciate that. <laughs> oh, good. Let's see. I think I've covered quite a bit this morning. We've talked about tax. Be adventurous when you get into tax. Make your own search screen. And remember in Matrix, mm -hmm. we also have the cart. Oh, I forgot about the cart. I love Ooh, the, cart. the cart. Quickly. I love the cart. I love yes. the cart. Okay. Let me pull up one of my searches. <laughs> Gail and I get way too excited I sometimes. Know, I know. So here, here is a search that I'm. I just got on the screen, Very and good. I get a phone call. I got to go. Someone says you got to come put out a fire. I'm going to select all of them. I'm going to go down to carts, and it's my cross property. That's my cart, the okay. agent, and I'm going to add all these to the cart. Okay. So now I'm going to go put out the fire. I'm going to come back six hours later. They will stay in the cart until I get rid of them. How do I get to the cart? Good question. I go to the, my home screen, and you will notice it says My Carts. I click on My Cross Property, there we and go. lo and behold, now there they are. I can email, I can print them, I can map them, I can do whatever I want to do with them, and they're in my cart. And I could do another search a different property type if I wanted to okay. and add them in my cart. So if I was searching for Gail and uh -huh. she wanted single family homes and I went, okay, I'll throw them in the cart and then I go, oh wait, she wanted a duplex, a full duplex, I could go to multifamily, I could do that and add them in the cart so it doesn't make any difference what property types in the cart. I can add anything. So in my cart, I could have multifamily and residential and even land if I wanted to, Abs all for one person? Abs absolutely. And every time you add a contact, uh -huh. they're, they have their own cart. There's Ann Burrell's cart because I have a contact named Ann Burrell, and I've added a listing to her cart, and it shows up on the homepage. So the cart, I think of it as a holding pin. Kind yeah, of that, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I like that. I like yeah. that. Okay. So that's a good thing. Well, I see our time is about up. I oh hope you've all learned some cool little tidbits. <laughs> Come to class. Call us. Our phone number is 214-540-2755. And I thank you for joining me and Gail today. Now, if you want to review this information, it's going to be available in a few days uh -huh. on our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and type in Metrotex. Right. And thank you again for coming. And, and our next webinar will be oh, E Key it? Made Easy. Oh, with yay. Heather. E Key Made Easy. I'm excited for yes, that one. And Heather's going to be hosting that, and she works in our tech support department, and she is amazing. Yes. So if you have any questions about the E Key and all the different features, we would love to see you then. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Gail. And y'all have a great week. All right. Thanks, y'all. Bye bye.